Our closest planetary neighbor is a seemingly cold, lifeless world, where temperatures plunge to minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and a thick layer of dust blankets most of the planet. But for explorers and dreamers, the red planet is warm and inviting. So Mars is a special place because it's kind of the farthest edge of a tangible frontier in our, in our human cognizance, our mindset. We can imagine being there. It seems like it would be a great tragedy if we did not become a spacefaring species and learn to live elsewhere. And Mars is the easy pick. Getting to Mars is far from easy. Living there will be an even greater challenge. But scientists and a growing number of private citizens say the effort is not only worth it, they predict it could happen within the next 20 years. Why colonize Mars, you ask me? I would say, why not? For more than 50 years, unmanned spacecraft have been visiting Mars and turning up surprising discoveries about the red planet. Mars offers many of the ingredients that we need to live. Mars has giant polar caps made of primarily frozen water. We think perhaps 30, 40% of the planet is what could be ice-rich soil or buried ice sheets. Nitrogen has now been discovered in the Martian soils and lower atmosphere. All these ingredients of a habitable world tell us we should go. But getting to Mars presents huge technical challenges. Because Mars and Earth orbit the sun at different rates, timing exactly when to launch is critical. The red planet comes close every 26 months. But even at its closest approach, Mars is nearly 34 million miles away, 1,500 times farther than the moon is from Earth. An average trip will take roughly six months. Well, one of the challenges is if you travel by a rocket through the universe, you don't have any fuel stations there. So all the rocket fuel you're carrying at launch is what you've got to play with. Once you get out of the atmosphere of Earth, you only boost your rocket, and from there on you coast, in a way, all the way to Mars. The long trip poses serious health risks for the crew. Constant exposure to cosmic and solar rays can affect mission-critical brain functions like memory and focus. The high-speed subatomic particles can tear through DNA molecules, leading to cancer and other diseases. And prolonged weightlessness can reduce bone mass by 1 to 2 percent every month. The one-way trip alone could cut muscle mass and force in half, giving a 40-year-old astronaut the strength of an 80-year-old by the time they reach Mars. Going to Mars will actually be a medical experiment. The first women and men, and those that follow, will be, in, in effect, uh, poster children for what it's like to go in space for one to three years to conduct a, an expedition to Mars. So Mars will stretch us as people going to live in a very alien place in space. Once humans land on Mars, the key to survival will be establishing an Earth-independent way of life. Early colonists will have limited supplies from home, so learning to live off the land is critical. But don't expect the early colonists to live outdoors. The atmosphere has virtually no oxygen and no air pressure, with constant radiation streaming from space. An ever-present superfine red dust has the capacity to short out electronics and cause major health problems. It's difficult to think how we will live on Mars because we're still kind of in the equivalent of kindergarten getting to know the place. So I do think we will find and learn from Mars where we could live better, safer, smarter, even more cost-effectively in terms of the resources available. For the very first 
decades, I would imagine that we live in lava tubes. Those are caves that have been emptied out because the lava inside of these tubes was traveling at a greater speed than the lava around it, and it would solidify, and you would end up with rather large caves. These would be natural places to go, to, be, to put rock between you and space radiation and Mars dust. And so, in effect, going underground may be one's way to learn to live and work on Mars as people. One of the greatest challenges will be accessing water. One option would be beaming microwaves at the frozen soil. The microwaves heat up the rock, which then melts the ice around it. Large quantities will be needed to sustain life and grow crops. So how would we produce food on Mars for us to live? Obviously, organically would be the recommended method. And how would we get our protein? So there's lots of choices. Mars presents a large land area to collect sunlight, to drive energy systems that could grow plants, that could grow plants in water hydroponically, stack vertically because of available energy. There aren't cloudy days on Mars like we have on Earth, so it's a very efficient solar farming opportunity. How we do that, though, presently is really the subject of conjecture, of theories. We have no practical experience. People would like to actually conduct some of those experiments. At NASA's Johnson Space Center, some of those ideas are being, pardon the pun, cultivated. Another idea that's been proposed is terraforming Mars to make it more Earth-like. By adjusting the chemical compounds in Mars' atmosphere, we could warm up the planet and create enough oxygen so that humans can breathe. The simple way to heat up Mars is to make a solar sail and erect it at just the right distance from Mars that it reflects sunlight back on the south pole of Mars, which has a lot of frozen carbon dioxide on it. And you melt the frozen carbon dioxide, it goes into the atmosphere, and it creates a runaway greenhouse effect. Making Mars' atmosphere thick enough could happen actually very quickly. That can happen in less than 50 years. Surviving and thriving long-term in deep space will take the brightest minds here on our home planet. And liftoff at dawn and a new era of American space exploration. NASA's 2014 test launch of the Orion spacecraft put us one step closer to a planned human mission to Mars in the 2030s. And private ventures are also rushing to make history, testing new technologies and generating excitement. I predict in the next tens of years, a better private-public partnership for exploring space, both as a first wave, where the profit margin will be low, and as a stepping stone to the next wave, where space can be used for the benefit of people, both to live better and to make money, is possible. We think we understand this. Single planet species probably won't survive. So Mars offers a haven, lots of obstacles, but in terms of human destiny, destiny of people on this planet today, going there to live is just so attractive.